Hello everyone, thanks for joining today. The topic for today is going over span tables. And in this case, we'll focus on rafters and end rafter materials. So when we look at this project here, we can see we have rafters for the roof framing. And in the settings here over on the right, I have these set to a key two by eight for both of them. So if we go back out into our settings, when we click on settings, go to framing rules, and we edit the framing rules. Again, our focus is just going to be rafters, but any place that you want to utilize the span tables, you would have to make the setting or the selection of auto would have to be available. So if I scan through my settings here and find rafter framing, and I see I have rafter material, I click on the green E icon here, and I have my materials that are available to be selected in a job. I have to make sure that auto is available. So here at the bottom, I have auto. I just want to add that to my list. See, it's over here on the left, so I save that one. And if I have builders that are under me that want to use this, this feature, I could apply this to builders. Um, go into this screen, E, find auto again, and we'll add this to our list so we have auto. So again, we would repeat this process for any material that we want to automate the framing that SmartBook chooses. This may be truss carriers, it may be rafters, it may be posts, columns, things like that. So this is the first part. We can go ahead and save this and save our changes and go back. So the, another thing that you have to do if it's not been done is make sure that you have a loading question set up in the job tab. So in this case, I had this done beforehand, but we'll walk through how this happens. So to add this question, you have to add, add new, and we have to add loading as a job question. So when we look at what I've set up for loading, it's a list type question. The prompt has to be spelled out exactly like this with loading, capital L. And the tooltip is optional. You don't have to use that or you can fill that in however. And then your choices for loadings would be separated by a line break. So I have 20, I have 21, 4, 4, I have 45 and 5, and so on. So all your choices you have to separate with line breaks. So when we save this, and we look at the drop down, it gives you your choices in a drop down. So for today's loading, we're only going to focus on the 20 pound. And so we have this all in place and we can save. So for the next part of the training, we would go into settings and span tables. And this is where we can start building these tables out. So the first thing we'll do when we get into the span tables is we click the add button and then we select the type of table that we want to set up. So again, we're only doing rafter for today and we specify the loading. So we'll put 20 pound loading in here and this number can be anything. It could even be a word. Maybe it's an area. I'm just using snow load since it's uh, pretty standard in the industry to, to use numbers for snow load. So we have 20 pound loading I click save. And now I can start building out this table. So for the first, for the first product, we're going to start with our smallest framing material that we use, which would be a two by four. And I don't know where you all would be getting this data, but for the example I'll use today, I'm just using a, span table calculator that I found online. I'm sure your engineers may have may have some information where you can get this information from. But this is a free free tool you can use online and it's just by American Wood Council. We're not connected to them. Um, so on the on this tool you can put in your max span. You can select the species of lumber and they have several common species in here and I'm just using the southern pine for example. So I start out with a two by four southern pine, and this is for rafters, snow load, and I set my deflection at 360, and on the snow load, set to 20 pounds, and I'll just do a five pound dead load, just for an example here. So when I calculate this, it gives me the, the max span that a two by four can, can go um, under these conditions. So it, it tells me seven foot three inches. So if I jump back to my settings here, um, there are a few settings that we can look at. So it's asking for the rafter spacing and it's asking for the rafter length. So 
those are two things you have to obviously make sure they're dialed in. And, and in this case, it may be, I need to make sure that I set my spacing. So I have my spacings at 24 inches, which is correct. And that's matching up with what I need in SmartBed here. So I have a two foot spacing and my rafter length, max length is seven foot three inches. So I click add and I have my first entry. So when you're setting up span tables, no matter the product, you always start with your shortest length and then you keep expanding and stay with this same material until you reach the max length and the max spacing. So if we're doing seven foot three and our rafters, we're only doing two foot spacings for this, this case. So we're going to move to the next material right away. So um, I'll go back to my table and we'll start out with a different material now. So I want to run a two by six. So I switch it to a two by six. I leave the deflection the same. This is all the same and I calculate again. So it tells me my maximum horizontal span is 11 feet four. So again, you can get this data wherever you want, um, providing that it's the way that you want to build. So we're not engineering this in any way. This is just purely for an example to help you set these up. So I do 11 feet four, two foot spacing, and I will choose a two by six. So now I have two entries. And add another line, we'll go ahead and go up to two by eight. So I'm gonna do a two by eight, two foot spacing, and I need to pull my data and see what my table says again. So I go back, choose a two by eight product, calculate it. It tells me my max span is 15 feet. My rafter length of 15 feet. So I've got three three lengths set up here, and I'm just going to copy this for end rafters so that we can run them the same. Maybe you don't size end rafters quite as large since sometimes they're supported by the end wall. Um, but we want to add. I'm going to save this table what I have so far, and add a new table for end rafter just to keep them all the same. So now when I go back into my job and go into the rafter settings, uh, I did have to close my job out so that I get my new choice of auto here at the bottom. So now when I set my rafter material to auto and I set the end rafter material to auto also, and then the last requirement is I need to make sure I have my loading set correctly. So these two settings are dependent on the loading that you have selected in the job. So for it to pull the correct size, I need to have the loading set up. So if we refresh the job now and have it automatically size these rafters based off of the 20 pound loading that I set up, we can see in the job review, I'm getting a two by eight and a two by eight. So if I change my building size, we can move this down to six feet, possibly six feet wide. and we just keep an eye on the rafters. So now we can see we're getting two by four. And if we move this out to 10 feet wide, now we're getting two by sixes and so on. So you can use this, again, you can use these span tables um, to set it up and you can automate the sizes of your columns, um, girts, purlins, any, any choice that you can find in the span table dropdown, you can go ahead and set those up. It may be door headers. So when you click on the add table button, any of these options, you can, you can set up tables for them. And you can also have multiple versions. So if you set up a 20 pound loading, you can also set up a 25 or 30 and just create a new table. And the last thing to know about all this um, is when you're setting these tables up, if you do price with trusses in your table, you, as soon as you start creating these loadings, you have to edit your trust catalog to reflect these, these loadings. So if you previously had your trust loading set it at zero or this column being empty, as soon as you start adding loadings, you have to update this, this column, um, providing you have trusses of that loading to price with. So as you start adding loadings and span tables, you have to have a trust catalog that has that, has that data. Otherwise, you will not have a perfect match. 
So thank you all for watching today. Hope this helps. Take care.